Hey guys, so Sun Tide here. I got this comment from Ikaku65 about being contested, and I thought it was a good opportunity to kind of walk through their question, answer it in a bit more of a detailed way, as well as start kind of a, a conversation back and forth in case any players have questions on basic TFT stuff or specific issues they're running into, uh, and I could answer them in a more formal manner. So let me read out the question and then I'll go through some of my advice for it. So they said, what do I do when I've committed to a comp, but then someone else gets my carry slash late game units and I don't find anything I plan on needing? Example. Disco. I have all the lower cost disco units and supporting units, but can't find TF or Blitz. Then all of a sudden someone that didn't have the disco units pops out, takes a TF, and takes my comp. I could switch to Karthus, but there's other Pentacle players already. I can't switch to a melee carry like Riven or Yone because I've committed AP items. What do I do? I could go into the specifics of like this meta, what units you would pivot to, what you do, but I'm going to try to keep my advice as general as possible just so it's not just useful for this particular meta because, again, as always, with every TFT question, the answer is it depends particularly on the meta, the players you're playing against, the level you're playing against, but I'm going to try my best to give advice that I think is general enough and will apply beyond just this particular meta. First is something we're also going to touch at the accepting stage of this, but if you identify your game is kind of screwed, you want to aim to minimize your losses. So if it's like completely screwed, and we'll talk about a little, a couple ways that you could either prevent this from happening, getting to this point of the game, or things you can do to maybe salvage this, but something to keep in mind is if you think it's like completely screwed, you want to try to turn your eighth place into a sixth place. So in situations, sometimes you would like save your gold a little bit more so you can roll down a little bit later or not greed as much for roll downs. You very likely want to throw that out the window because you're trying to turn an eighth to a six. So this might be like donkey rolling every round to zero, trying to hit in this particular situation, like a zigs, like a five cost, like a, that two or 3% five cost to put your AP items on and save you a bunch of health. Or potentially, if you high roll enough or get exactly what you're looking for, you can potentially save your game by doing this. But it requires a lot of luck. And the other thing, which is more a getting to this point, once you're at this point, you can't really go back and play more flexibly. When you're slamming items in the early game and you're choosing to not roll down and see more champs or, and lose health through having a weaker board than other people who might be rolling down or other people who just got luckier and hit the units they need in less shops, you are choosing your path or at least narrowing down the opportunities you have in a game. So you have to be keeping that in mind. So ideally when you're slamming items, you want to be slamming as flexible items as possible. Uh, a good way that I include this, this that would be useful for every meta is if you go over the tactics.tools, like something you would need in a pinch. Like you might be like, okay, I want to play Twisted Fate, but I also want to play, I, I want to slam an item that is flexible. So you can go and be like, oh, I could tw play Twisted Fate and Ari. I can slam a Gunblade on both of those. You can even go into more depth of being like, okay, uh, even though Shoujin's not best in slot in Ari, I could slam Gunblade gun Shoujin for Twisted Fate uh, and also play that on Ari. Just keeping those th together, those options, is a good idea. And just generally using a page like that or a reference like that to keep yourself going. Uh, and an additional thing on top of that is, I think myself included, but a lot of people get locked into needing a cookie cutter board to cap out or to win rounds because especially if we're of the mindset here where the game is kind of cooked and you're looking for anything everything to save your board you don't have to have a perfect board in general to win rounds but especially to save games so they're talking about like oh there's another person playing Karthus here uh and so I don't want to go down that path but it's like hey if you've already sunk your econ into this or already slammed the items and you're kind of it looks like you're not going to top four this game. It's totally fine, especially if there's only one person playing this build. So you can still kind of play on that and you could play like a, a good unit with that. Hopefully you can get a two star or a headliner and then maybe a twitch to just get executioner activated um, to get you going in the back line. And then as well on the front line, traits sometimes can be less important. Um, say you have 
two star pop, you end up on your roll down because you want to be holding as many units as you feasibly can during roll down. Uh, if you're donkey rolling, it gets a little bit harder because you only have so much gold and you're trying to hit two star four cost or two star three cost. So your money might be tight. You ideally want to get that two star four cost. Say even it's like, like I was going to say, like a thresh and a poppy. They don't have any traits that overlap, but two two star four costs are going to function as a pretty solid front line just because of how the general stat distribution is. So just be willing to be more flexible and you have to make everything out of the rolls, especially if you're really broke. So if you're rolling, uh, you're rolling, you've like 10 gold left and you're on level eight, you haven't hit what you need. You got to think about how you could use anything in your shop, how you could play a strong board and still maintain the econ. You just have to make sure you're getting everything out of it because again, you were trying to, as long as you change your mindset to at that point, I'm turning an eighth into a six. That'll help, I think, everything else around it to do these specific things. Because once you're thinking in that mindset where it's like, I'm not trying to get insanely lucky, hit everything I need in three shops. It's not going to happen. But more realistically, you could be like, oh, I have a thresh pair. Uh, I can hold a thresh pair. I'll be, go down the zero gold. I might have to sell some weird things and adjust some weird things. But this sets me up for a potential opportunity on the next turn to finish up this thresh, stuff like that. Hopefully that general idea makes sense. And another thing uh, that's important, and I think the player who made the post acknowledge this and is already on the right track when they said someone already hit disco and there's someone else playing pentakill before they decide to make the swap great idea also acknowledging like hey with the items you slam and the items you have you're locked into not really playing a melee carry that's also a very great thing to acknowledge um but in general you, you, you if you're not doing that you also need to be scouting for roll downs as well as seeing uh, and this kind of goes in this, kind of hints to where other players are going. It might just happen like the post was saying where someone is not playing Twisted Fate and then on the roll down, they have the ability to swap over and play Twisted Fate and someone who's committed to it uh, gets screwed. But of course you want to keep an eye on what other people are playing. Maybe if they slam a particular item that's like, okay, they've slammed blue buff, red buff. They're probably looking to play Ezreal. Again, I'm trying to keep my advice as general as possible, but some an example from this set. You'd be like, okay, so I should probably avoid playing Ezreal unless the shoe is reversed and then all my roll down, I hit a lot of Ezreals. You got to keep that open, but remember that. Uh, level and econ is also an important thing to see. Like, what is the the tempo of this lobby and where are people going to be uh, rolling down? I think currently 4-1 is the prime roll down at 8, um, but it's going to depend on the lobby's tempo, econ, health, what have you, and the and your individual tempo lobby, what have you. So if, if you are concerned about someone getting to your comp or you're so locked in, like these items can only play Twisted Fate, you might have to greed and roll down maybe on the pve round before everyone else does all things to kind of keep in mind um and there's variance based on that like if you are hard committing to a comp at 2-1 which a comp like disco might require you to or i i can uh, talk about what the issues i think are with disco at certain points at different times but if you're like full forcing something and you see someone potentially contesting you that might be the line to be like okay i'm gonna roll down sooner than them uh this does maybe not really answer the question uh, because the question is saying like after this happens what do you do to recover but it just kind of more things to keep in mind as well as something like this might happen someone might be thinking this way greeting for it, roll down early and before you even start your roll down you see that they already have twist of fate so that is a good thing to acknowledge before you do that particular roll down because then you have additional money and additional time to be like okay I could maybe play Karthus from here. It, it lets you zone in on what units you want to be picking up. But again, I think in general too, holding units during your roll down is very important because you don't know what you're going to hit after it. So say you feel like 50 gold to roll down. First shop, you see two four costs you probably aren't going to play. You can still grab them. And if you don't have them later, sell them. But say you grab those two and then you hit a headliner in this set. And so then you have five of that four cost already. It's going to be really hard for anyone on the contest. You, you can kind of carve out that path and then continue your roll down based on what additionally you hit. Um, and again, keeping in mind, players are also watching you. So you just got to keep your eye on it. Scouting is very mentally taxing too. So don't wear yourself out over scouting. 
especially now that in this current meta, streaks are a little bit less important. Don't wear yourself out in unscouting. You could be looking at everybody's board every round, looking at their augments, looking at their traits, and you're just going to burn yourself out. So don't do that. And then uh, I think I, I wanted to make this short, but I'm already rambling on way far more than I thought I would. Acceptance. Sometimes you're going to go eighth. You cannot prevent it. Even the best players in the world are going to go eighth. Sometimes you can do everything right and still go eighth. So it's important to acknowledge that that just happens sometimes, but not use that as an excuse that if you do something that is a poor play or do something that is a, a low odds to let you get out, um, to let yourself get away with that. In the same way, if you high roll, you can acknowledge you played poorly, you high rolled, and you won, because that can also happen in TFT. So try your best to avoid that results-oriented mindset, mindset and build good habits and patterns. So big summary, what do you do when you're contested? You want to see what's going to happen with your game. If it's completely cooked, try your best to save as much HP and LP as possible. Uh, before that, you want to play more flexibly, flexibly uh, on your roll downs, on your way up to that. Just keep as many options open as you can, as far as you can into the game, um, either by like slamming flexible frontline items or slamming, if you want to play a particular AP or AD comp, slamming the most flexible versions of those items. So if you get contested or you miss on your roll down, you can pivot to something else. Um, scouting in general especially before your roll downs because you can't really scout during your roll downs just scouting to see what other people are trending towards playing to make sure you're not covering already treaded ground and finally you have to accept sometimes you're just not going to hit and you're going to have a bad game but try not to get that two down on you because that is just how tft works sometimes you high roll sometimes you low roll sometimes you get contested sometimes you get gifted a free first place and don't have to do anything so yeah hopefully i answered your question and to continue on the series if anyone has any additional questions down in the comments below they want some guidance on or just in general tft stuff let me know and i'll try my best to give you a good answer and if there's any particular additional questions that come up for this, feel free to throw them in the comments. If they're short enough, I'll probably reply there. If not, I'll make another video about it. And then we farm infinite content.